probably the most difficult carving kit that I provide is the Raven carving kit. Now its general shape is relatively simple however the complexity and the challenge really comes in with these flight feathers that you can see up here and making the cutouts between them. If you're going to do that you really should practice on something simpler first unless you've already got experience in which case absolutely have a go. You also have the option of simplifying it by not bothering to cut in between each one of the flight feathers and just generally rounding the shape off. You can then make up for it with details that you'll put in later. However you choose to do it, it's worth taking a quick photograph with your phone of the original kit with the markings on and that way you've got something to refer back to when you come to add details. So to make the cutout you want to take the sides of the wood in until they meet the outermost flight feathers. Once you've done that, you then start the knife from just below the outermost flight feather and start to shave down at an angle, bringing the wood all the way into the line as neatly as possible until you reach down to the bottom of the tail. Don't worry too much about these areas at the moment, under the, well between the tail and the wings, as we'll come back to that in a minute. Up here, be careful because you're going to be cutting into end grain, which is where the wood fibres come out and have been cut. The knife will respond differently on that end and that end to the way it does down the sides where you're working with the grain. So take your time. Don't try and remove too much material just at any one point as you're working across the end grain. Just take little bits, cut from that direction and then slice away to it. That direction and slice away to it until you've worked your way down. Once you've done that, you can then come in and, using the same technique, a cut in that way and a slice in that way to remove the material as you move in there. Again, just take your time. Don't get frustrated. You will get there. Just remember to alternate your cuts. And that way, you'll remove the material safely and without having to use too much force. Now, if you do decide to cut in between the flight feathers, be very careful because most knives are thicker in terms of the steel than the gaps between the feathers. So move in as far as you feel comfortable to using that same alternate cut angles. Be very careful that you don't snap the tips off the feathers. And then once you've got in as far as you feel the knife is comfortable, come, instead of cutting from the outside in, use the tip of the knife and score from the very point where the feathers meet to the outer edge where you've cut to. Score in both, on both sides and then just take angled cuts away to remove the material between them. As I say, it is quite a challenge between those. If you do happen to break off one of the feathers, don't worry, just redraw the feather on slightly shorter than it was before and it'll be fine. Just match it on the other side. Once you've got the two-dimensional shape cut out and you're happy with it, making sure that you've, brought, you've removed all of the wood that's outside of the main lines. You can then start to think about how you want the three-dimensional shape to be, so how you want the wings to be formed, how you want the body and the tail to be formed. Normally, when I'm carving something like a leaf or a winged animal or an insect, I'll aim to have the tips of the wings come down to the back of the wood, and that way it's balanced when it's being worn. If the wings come up to the top of the wood or stay at the top and you carve down to the bottom, what you'll find is that the pendant will rock about whilst it's being worn. But the choice is yours. To start with, you'll want to differentiate the body of the raven from the wings. In order to do that, use the tip of the knife, start from the top of that line and score down. Do the same on that side and then just gently take thin shavings away, slicing the knife along there until you reach the line that you've scored and you'll remove just thin slivers of wood. Repeat that process until you've got the body differentiated from the wings on either side. Once you've done that, you can then start to shave away the surface of the wings to lower them down to the back if that's the way you want to do it. The same goes for the tail. You'll want to score along the bottom of the body there and then shave up to it from below to lower the tail towards the back and that way it will be well supported and balanced when it's being worn. Once you've done that you can then refine how the body 
blends towards the tail and do the same up here where effectively the, the shoulders of the raven join the wings. Just smooth them down and then you can round the body off to create the cylindrical finish. Once you're happy with the general three-dimensional shaping of the Raven, you can then give it a quick clean up with the sandpaper, unless you're happy with the knife finish. If you are happy with the knife finish, that's absolutely fine because it will actually add to the texture of the wings. But if you want to smooth the finish, start with the, the 240, no, sorry, start with the 120 grit sandpaper that you got in your kit, move on to the 180 and then the 240 to finish, and that'll give you a nice smooth finish. Once you've done that, you're then ready to add the details, so the feather details and any other details that you want to put in. Refer back to the photo that you took at the start if you want to, or have a look online for photos of ravens, um, just to give you a, a general idea or a reference point for how the feathers are formed. Generally, there's at least three layers of feathers. There are many more if you want to look in real detail, but the three layers of feathers is a pretty good starting point. Use the tip of the knife and score all the way along, along the lines between each feather. And then from below each of the score lines, just take thin slithers away to raise each feather up above the one that's behind it. Do that all the way along both wings. I usually start from the topmost flight feathers and work my way back. And then you can do the same for the tail. Usually I'll make the, the central feather in the tail the highest point but it's entirely up to you. Once you've done all of that, you then need to secure your eyelet into the, the raven pendant in order for it to be worn. So take the small eyelet that comes in the kit. Be very careful now because if you've really refined the, the beak of the bird down, you don't want to break the beak apart as you're screwing it in. So just take your time and very gently screw it in to the beak of the bird and then once it's in nice and tight you can simply thread your cord through and it should be ready to worn, be ready to be worn. If it's not balanced enough for you when you've finished all of the shaping you can always turn it over and take some wood away from the back of any wing if one of the wings is heavier than the other and it's not sitting balanced. Anyway, I hope you enjoy carving the raven and yeah, carve on.